end of the line, undeads come. Did you really think you could get away with assaulting an innocent young woman in the streets? She's my girlfriend. Can't I kiss my girlfriend in public? We know exactly how that goes. Kiss her, then bite her, and before you know it, her lifeless body ends up in your fridge so you can feed on what's left of her blood for breakfast tomorrow. I wasn't going to hurt her. I love her. Rubbish. Your kind doesn't know love, just greed. Out of all the horrible abominations in the world, vampires are the worst. I'd say that's aliens, but it doesn't matter. We're coming for you all. Prudence. Just in time. Why isn't he dead yet? We thought you could use a little practice after five weeks in paradise, just in case you're feeling a little rusty, so... He's all yours. Are you the boss of these guys? They are lying. I did nothing wrong. I was just spending time with my girlfriend. Is that true? No, of course not. Listen, bloodsucker, we're about to grant you a quick and painless death. But if you don't shut up now, we might as well draw it out, just to give you a taste of the pain you caused your victims. But I never killed anybody. I'm a peaceful vegetarian vampire. I live off plasma fruit and stolen blood bags. So you're a thief too? What are you waiting for? Shoot him. Peaceful, my ass. Are you okay? Why didn't you shoot? No idea. It's just... I'm... Rusty, as I said. But nobody else needs to know. We'll write in the report that Prudence carried out her duty as expected. Now let's get out of here. The sun will take care of his remains soon enough. And now the news. Following reports of gunfire in uptown San Michuno during the night, an unidentified man was found shot dead at the family center earlier this morning. This was confirmed by the police who were called to the scene after a young employee discovered the body. Mary Sue. Only four months after the robbery of the family center's restaurant by the infamous outlaw mischief, this marks the second time this year that the highly popular event location became the scene of a crime. No details regarding the circumstances of the crime have been made public yet. All right suckers, the SCIA has entered the building and we have everything under control. You can go home now. Hey there, you're the witness who discovered the body? Yes, and you're... Mrs. Mamini? Since when do you work for the SCIA? Misleading if you please. These are my partners Agent LG Ganti and Agent Shadehound, and we ask the questions. Do you realize that this so-called family center is just a front for a criminal engineering company called Crabcorn? Excuse me, what is a Crabcorn? Oh right, I forgot about your see no evil hear no evil speak no evil policy when it comes to your employer. But hypothetically speaking, if such an organization did exist, would they gain anything from dramatically hunting random vampires across the rooftops of San Myshuno? Hypothetically speaking, if this fantasy organization had its mind set on quality of life improvement through modern technology and robotics, taking lives certainly wouldn't contribute to that goal. So no, no random vampires would be harmed in the process of developing futuristic utility bots and androids. Androids too? I don't buy it. You're telling me about vampires, but human-looking robots are too much? Still hypothetically speaking, of course. Since Crabcon doesn't exist, we'll never know what they would be capable of developing. Enough of this. Stop harassing my daughter already. Chill out, Barani. We were just asking her a few questions. Mrs. Mamini, since when do you work for the SCIA? Anyway, doesn't matter. Mary Sue already told the police everything she knows. We'd like to go home now. Fine by me. Go. We're done here. Now let's take a look at the body. Definitely a vampire, judging by the teeth. And definitely the one we were looking for, judging by the photo Loki showed me. Bad news for Loki then. But Crabcorn is off the hook. I never really suspected them. Even if they did kill people, they wouldn't be stupid enough to do it so publicly on their own property. But I had to be sure. Now what other organization do we know that hates vampires and wants them dead, along with all other occults? I understand you're desperate to find the witch hunters, but let's not jump the gun. This guy was a vampire after all, and vampires feed on human blood. 
What if he was simply unlucky and his latest would-be victim fought back? And that would-be victim just happened to be carrying a gun and knew exactly where to point it to take out a vampire? They're extremely hard to kill by conventional methods. I once shot one in the head at point-blank range and she survived. Whoever did this clearly knew what they were doing. Government agents at a murder investigation? What a rare sight. How I've missed that voice. Like a stomach ulcer. If it isn't I among Meanie, the unfriendly neighborhood witch. Since when do you work for the SCIA? Why does everybody keep asking me that? Don't worry, you don't have to answer. In fact, you have every right to remain silent. Remember when I asked you to give me a reason to arrest you? Well you just did. Impersonating a government agent is a crime. So is obstruction of justice, even if it's done by a cop. My boss won't approve of your actions. So? I fail to see how the proprietor of whatever adult entertainment club you play bouncer at could possibly have a say in this matter. Let's ask her then. Calling Valerie Ravenhurst, director of the SCIA. Wait, you have the actual director of the SCIA on speed dial? Yeah, she's not only my boss, you know, but also a close friend. Feel free to ask her yourself. All those years of worrying about matters of international security have made her a little impatient when it comes to small talk, but I'm sure she has time for your petty feud with my partner, if you make it quick. No need, we all have work to do. But you better watch your step. You were here when the restaurant was robbed four months ago, and you're here again now. If you keep showing up to crime scenes like this, others might get suspicious too. Good job Grande. Who knew you could be such a devious liar? Well, as you know, I did work for the SCIA a while back, so not everything was alike. But I haven't talked to Ravenhurst since Strangerville, so she might have been a little confused if we had actually called her. We should avoid situations like this in the future. Don't tell me you're scared of Aaron Bell. He arrested me once before. Didn't work out for him. He's not wrong though. You should watch your step. When Evelyn robbed the restaurant months ago, you took the blame as mischief, and now you're wearing her signature black suit. What if someone recognizes you? It's not the suit that makes mischief, it's the enchanted shades. As long as I'm not wearing those, mischief and I look like different people to anyone who doesn't know better. Besides, Evelyn was wearing a red llama costume back then. They'd never find something so tasteless among my belongings. Less talking, faster walking. I want to go visit the rest of our family in their underground exile. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. You could never do it more wrong than Nate when I try to teach him. Hey, I'm right here, and I'm a vampire with super senses, so don't think I can't hear you just because I'm working. Wish I could be working. The lecture period of my very first semester starts next week, or at least I think it's next week. Hard to keep track of time when it's perpetually dark outside, and instead of preparing for university, I'm learning to knit. Not that I'm not grateful for your hospitality, but... I understand it's hard, but try to understand your mother too. She just learned that our worst enemy might be back from the dead, and she's doing everything in her power to keep you and your brother from being targeted again, even if that includes hiding you away from the world down here in Shadow Vale. The very same place the witch hunters took us when they kidnapped us, and now we're stuck here again, but for our safety. How ironic. More ironic than Espa and I, two vampires, living in the leader of the witch hunter's old house? Nothing we can do except try to make the best of it. Now focus, the next step is going to be a little more difficult. Oops. Why is this so difficult? I was a witch long before I became a vampire. But then you lost your powers for half of your life. Take your time, it will come back. Do you know that from the future? Was I both a witch and a vampire in your time too? No, but you were a good teacher. I learned a lot about being a vampire from you, and about witchcraft from Wilbica. Let me return the favor now. How come we were the ones teaching you? Didn't you have parents? That's... complicated. Hey Tiamo, what are you doing out here? You're supposed to stay in the house. That's where the protective silver moon crystal is. It's also where Nate and Esper and Wilbica are. 
the living room is cramped enough already, we wouldn't want Iyamo to break anything with a misfired spell by practicing magic. A risk we'll have to take, until I find Prudence Lakra and kill her again. That could take months mum. Why is Leviathan allowed to go out? Your future husband isn't going out. He's in the magic realm training as the community's new fisherman. Or rather, he's training the already existing fishermen to get better at their jobs. But most importantly, the witch hunters don't know him, so he's safe for now, unlike the dead vampire at the family center. Were you able to identify him? Was it indeed our missing delivering man? Yes. We should talk to your friend Mars. Can't wait to meet him. His name is Mercury, not Mars, and he's not my friend, but yes, we should talk to him. Tiamo, you go back inside. Grande, stay here and make sure he behaves. Seriously? A babysitter? I'll be back soon. Until then, no elaborate magical experiments in Nate's living room. Just one more minute. It's been cloudy all day. Why should it start raining now? Because I say so. My instincts have never failed me when it comes to the weather. All right, Beryl. It's lunch time. Wash your hands and come set the table. If we wait a little longer, we can wash our hands in the rain. Please, a brother doesn't have all day, and neither do I, so hurry up. Cheryl and Meryl can eat with us too. Serena. Good to see you're doing well, despite everything. I'm sorry your family got caught up in this mess, but it won't happen again. I'll make sure to lead the hunters away from you. That's delicious, Max. Do they teach priests to cook at church? Good to know that membership isn't entirely useless. Beryl. What? I'm just saying what everybody is thinking. That's okay. Just please, do not cancel your membership. I can't afford to lose my best altar girl, especially now that David Bell is no longer coming to church. David, why? Did something happen to Evelyn? I don't think I'd ever want to be an altar girl myself, but I could join the choir. The Church of New Chris doesn't have a choir. About time to rethink that, because Meryl has an awesome voice. Nothing to worry about here. Enjoy your lunch. I'll be back. Fancy place. Who do you think furnished it like this? The witch hunters who lived here before, or your friend Jupiter? It's still Mercury, and no idea. Wait here please, while I get the master. I don't like that cat. Jealous because I can speak and you can't? Huh? So who is this guy? He must be important if you put on your VIP suit just for him. This is indeed my VIP suit, if VIP stands for Vampire Inclusive Politics. We're not here for a friendly visit. Mercury has been giving me nothing but trouble since we first met, but he's also a well-respected and influential member of the community, so I try to stay on his good side whenever possible. Oh, is he one of those witch-hating vampires you've been telling us about? Their leader. It's best if you don't mention you're a witch, just in case he doesn't already know. Well, this is going to be fun. Loki. Always a pleasure to have the Vampire Ambassador as a guest. Hello, Mercury. Can I get you anything? A glass of blood wine of my own creation, perhaps? No thanks, I'm good. And who is this charming lady? Ah, your mommini, wicked witch of Forgotten Hollow. Still find me charming? Because I find you absolutely adorable. You'd make a great addition to my multi occulty garden gnome collection. Is that so? She's just trying to lighten the mood with a little humor because, unfortunately, we've got some bad news. The dead vampire found at the family center. It was indeed your delivery man who went missing yesterday evening. We can show you photos to prove it. Don't bother, I believe you. Poor Troyer. This year would have been the 100th anniversary of his transformation. He was always a cowardly vegetarian who wouldn't hurt a fly, and overall a poor representation of a vampire who cared more about the happiness of his human girlfriend than her delicious blood, but at least he was decent at his job. Due to his untimely demise, several of my clients didn't get their goods delivered. So what exactly are you, the boss of Vampazone? Vampazone? Are you trying to insult me? 
If you're looking for plasma fruit seeds because you're too squeamish to drink human blood, or cheap table lamps that look like glowing eyes in the dark to add some personality to your boring empty crypt, that's what Vampazone is for. My range of products is a little more exquisite. The master is a merchant with millennia of experience. For the right price, he can provide anything his clients need, no matter how peculiar, dubious, or downright illegal. Thank you for the exposition Sir Wednesday, but I prefer not to use the I-word. Nothing is illegal by nature. Some of my products are just so rare and mysterious that certain societies, like the witch's magic community, would rather try to prohibit their distribution than use the opportunity to expand their horizons. Sorry master. Gosh, what a bootlicker. I heard that. Good, because you're the one I was thinking about. Witches and vampires have a long history of fighting each other. But all those differences aside, they share a common enemy now. The children of the sun are killing occults indiscriminately. Aya is looking for them, and Mercury, you have many useful connections. Do you have any information that could help us anticipate their next move? I just might. What's in it for me? How about the safety of your people, and your own? You think I'm scared of a few blood bags with guns? They may have killed Troyer, but I've survived generations of their kind without a scratch. Let them come. I'll give them the wild hunt of their dreams, except they'll be the prey. So you're not going to help us? I'm still waiting for your counteroffer for my history lesson on the fairies of Mount Como Rebi. Now you're asking for my help again, and once again you think I'll accept your gratitude as appropriate compensation for my services. You're an intriguing person Loki, but a terribly ineffective politician. Come back when you have something I want. That didn't go as planned. I should have known he wasn't going to help out of the kindness of his heart. He's too much of a businessman. And an asshole, but a fascinating one at that. If he's really thousands of years old, as his cat implied, how come he hasn't turned into a wraith yet? Loki, wait. Speaking of the cat. I need to talk to you, without the master. As it happens, he and I don't always see eye to eye. About what? The witch hunters. He has no reason to take them seriously after the many times they tried and failed to kill him over the millennia. Yeah, about that. But they did kill my previous family. I survived only because the master saved me and made me his familiar. I wouldn't want that to happen to any other occult families, whether they're vampires, witches, or whatever else, and I remember how he took out the hunters that killed mine. Forgive me father, for I have sinned. Go on. I spent all my life doing what I thought was right. But nowadays I'm not sure anymore, because... No, forget it. This was a bad idea. Don't be ashamed. Whatever is troubling you, you'll feel better after voicing it. God sees you, and he knows about it anyway. But he wants you to come and talk to him. Always. Well I... Reverend, what do you think happens after death? Do you believe in heaven? Of course. But what about hell? Eternal punishment for mistakes made within a few decades. Do you think that's just? I used to think so, but now? How does one know what is just and what isn't? That's not always an easy question to answer. But when in doubt, listen to your heart. My heart? Not the Bible? The Bible is a valuable source of divine knowledge, but it is not divine itself, because it wasn't written by God. It was written by men who merely tried to interpret God's words as best they could, given their time and circumstances. But a lot has changed since then, and some things were never meant to be taken literally in the first place. But how do you distinguish between the things you're supposed to take literally, the things that have changed, and everything else? That's where your heart comes in. Well, mine has failed me then. I was always certain that I'd go to heaven after I die, but the place I ended up in was... anything but heavenly. Are you saying you died and came back to life? In hindsight it was more like... a coma. But at the time, it felt like death. A very painful death that seemed to go on forever. And I don't understand why. I did everything that was asked of me without complaining, thought I was doing God's work, yet... it was either not enough, or never the right thing to begin with. 
I think I was given a second chance, but don't know what to do with it. Do I keep living my life like before but work even harder towards the goal I thought I was supposed to achieve, or do I change something? But what? I keep praying to God for answers but he won't give me any. Maybe you already know the answers. You're just too afraid to ask yourself the hard questions that you're asking God. What do you mean? That work you're doing in his name, why are you doing it? To earn your place in heaven, or to escape hell? It shouldn't be either of those things. Do the right thing because it's the right thing, and for no other reason. And if it doesn't feel right, then. It probably isn't. That's... Thank you Reverend. I'll have to think about that. God if you can hear me, please give me a sign. Anything. I need to know. Everything okay, Max? You look like you've seen a ghost. I... Can't say for sure that I haven't. You want me to infiltrate the Children of the Sun as a spy, to dismantle their organization from within? That's what Saturn the Grandmaster Vampire did to a different division of Witch Hunters a while ago, and according to his familiar, it worked. And you think Leviathan is the right man for the job? More like the only one. It has to be someone we know and trust, with no previous history with Prudence and her allies, and that alone limits our options considerably. They know everybody else in this room, as well as the Popescus, Charmaine, Elise, Serena. I don't even trust half of those people, but the point still stands. I think you were born for this Lev. You spent half of your life in places you weren't allowed to be, and showed me on Sulani how easily you can get in and out of those unnoticed. And everything else I can teach you. I used to be a spy myself. As long as you skip the lesson about telling everybody that you used to be a spy. Is there anything I can do to help? The witch hunters turned me into a vampire. It's about time they face the consequences. I don't think I like that idea. I happen to agree with the pleach freak. Your ambition does you credit fledgling, but you've been a vampire for five minutes. The one they murdered last night was over a century old. Lose your milk teeth before you bear your fangs. I don't have any more milk teeth, even though I'm only eight years old, so I'll do it. Again, are we sure the guy who thinks he only grows older every leap year is the spy we want? He's the spy we've got. And I know he can do this.